Sylvia, you said lately Santa, Santa uh, has been delivering even more coal, been delivering presents, but in coal, if you're delivering coal this year, it's even worse. I mean, it used to, when I was a kid, if you got coal and a switch, it was bad. But now if you're getting it, you're, you know, your footprint, I mean, all the other stuff that goes into it, getting coal is even a worse gift from Santa. <laughs> it sure is. Good morning. Good morning. I, I, you know, I think the, the, the coal point comes with a lot of the news that we've had in the market recently. So if we think about why we were sort of off to the races, it was ample fiscal monetary policy supportive of the markets, loads of liquidity in the markets. You know, the Fed was sort of dovish. We thought these uh, government spending bills were going to go through. And COVID felt like it was going away. So all of these things are kind of back on the table. The market doesn't like uncertainty, as we know. So you have this Omicron variant back in the system, keeping people at home, closing things down. You know, question mark on the 2T, uh, that's the $2 trillion bill. Um, you know, we're going to see what happens with, with fiscal and monetary policy and how they affect the market. So I just think that this was sort of a curveball towards the end of the year where we were expecting that rally. But I remain optimistic. I think it's going to come in 2022 for various reasons. Um, but this week is going to be a little bit volatile and kind of ho-hum. Yeah, it, things change gradually. And, and uh, you, for the next couple of quarters, you think that the, the tailwinds, both monetary and fiscal, will, will continue for the next couple of quarters. So dips should, should still be bought. Absolutely. I, you know, I think I think that the market will move when we get a deal. I don't think that, you know, maybe the two trillions off the table and it gets changed up a little bit. So the market's going to like that news. The Fed is is more hawkish, but rate hikes are likely to be so in, slow and steady. And I don't think that they're going to hit the top growth companies that much. So yesterday for or day before yesterday, for example, I bought Amazon, I bought Microsoft, I bought Google because I think that the future of enterprise technology, the cloud is you know, the thing that's going to really push those names forward and it's going to be multi-trillion dollars of investments. Um, earnings are going to continue for those types of stocks. So when they pull back on days like Monday, I like to buy them regardless of the Fed outlook, regardless of rates. Those companies have enough cash to sustain that. And they're taking huge parts in the metaverse, the fourth industrial revolution. And we have to think ahead and get into those things. Well, that's in contrast to someone we had yesterday who who still likes technology, but not the high multiple, not, not, the, not the, the dream stocks from the last couple of years. And I'm not saying they're, they're dreams, but they've, they've been dreams in terms of returns, the ones you just mentioned, the Amazons, the Microsofts, uh, the Google. So I actually asked that question. I, on weakness, do you get into those? And, and this individual said, no, I'd rather, it was Stephanie, I think. She said, you know, I'd rather have uh, more reasonable uh, multiples with good growth prospects. So one of her names was, was Cisco. But you'd go back into the high flyers and, and they will fly again to new highs, you think? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Cisco is not a bad play either. I think, again, that touches the metaverse and the growth in hardware. But I like getting into these names. I, I think that, you know, earnings is projected to continue to grow for these companies. And I think when you increase the, the E of the PE, you get a softened multiple there. And again, I just think they're on the forefront of technology, even though they're sort of part of the old classic you know, horses that got us here, fang names, they're innovating, they're moving forward. So I'm, you know, I'm not bullish on every single tech company out there, but I do think that some of these high flyers, and I'll throw Apple into there too, you know, getting into augmented reality, perhaps getting into EV, these companies are really just going to dominate the technology space. Um, Amazon might have a trillion dollar cloud business. You know, there's, there's a lot to be said here for earnings potential. God.